This is going to be a custom-built tiny FPV drone using mostly high-quality components from MAPS Company. It is actually a kit I won from a previous competition, and I'm excited to finally be able to put it together so I can show you how it actually performs. So this drone runs on a 1S LiPo battery, which makes it suitable for both indoor and outdoor flying. It features express laws for reliable control, offers around 7 minutes of flight time, and it is compatible with mostly any analog FPV goggles. It's going to make it a super versatile quad for beginners and experienced pilot alike. In this video, I will be guiding you through a step-by-step -step building process, showing you exactly how to assemble this drone from scratch. So whether you are new to FPV or just enjoy building your own gear, this guy will walk you through everything you need to know. And yes, a good news is I will be giving this drone away at the end of this video. I'll explain how you can enter the giveaway within the timeline, so make sure to watch the full video so you don't miss any important details. Before I begin, if you can, please help me like and subscribe as this is is going to keep my content flowing. Thank you. First, let's go over the components we will be using for this build. The frame will be the Beta FPV Meteor 85 frame, the kind of the older one pairing with the Beta FPV Canopy. So for the camera, we are going to be using the Cadex and Nano Analog, and the video transmitter will be handled by HGLRC Zeus VTX, which is going to be the 350 watt one, also the cheaper ones. The receiver is going to be the Beta FPV ELRS chip with a flat antenna. So everything trying to be very small, and these all came from Maps Company and it's kind of like the package that they're trying to sell. So for the flight controller, we're going with the MAPS F411 15 amp AIO, which supports only 1S power. So although it has a 15 amp kind of tolerance, but I'm trying to use it with 2S and it just doesn't work well. So yeah, try to stick with 1S. So the motors will be the MAPS 1103 11,000 kV motors, which is relatively low kV for 1S battery. However, since we are using a larger 85 millimeter frame and bigger propellers, this should kind of balance out well. But the assumption is that the configuration will provide longer flight time due to the increased efficiency and kind of lower KVs. So let's start the building process. And the first thing you need to do is to solder the BT 2.0 power cable. So starting by pretending the main positive plus and the negative minus pad to the AIO board, then place the wire on the pad and apply heat with your solder iron to secure them. So once finished, your power lead should properly attach like this. So next, bring out the frame and add the gummies to the mounting point on the AL, press the AL into the frame until they kind of fit snugly. Now let's install the motors, and this is where I noticed a design oversight from MAPS. So they included a plug and an AIO, so you can see that they have motor plugs, but the motors came without connectors. So MAPS, if you're planning to sell this as a kit, this need to be fixed. Either remove the plugs from the AIO for direct soldering, or you can just include the matching plugs for the motors. So it's gonna make it easy for users. But for me, that is not gonna be a very big issue because we can still make our own connectors and I'm gonna show you how. So to do this, you will need a box of assorted XH connectors. So you can buy this on Amazon, just buy a bunch of them and have different type of connectors sent to you. You're gonna need four three pin plugs like this. So six wires with the pins on both ends. So color doesn't matter since like, yeah, you're getting a lot of sort of color. So I just kind of use whatever I find. And you're going to also need some heat shrink tubes. So first you're going to trim the motor wire to a shorter length and strip the end slightly longer than usual. You're going to cut the connected wires to match and strip them to the same kind of length as a tip. You're going to slide the heat shrink tube onto the motor wires, solder the motor wires in the connected wires, and then move the tubing over to the joint and shrink it with a heat gun. Finally, just plug into the wire plugs into the connectors in the correct sequence, and you're going to repeat this process for all four motors. Once done, we're going to be screwing the motors onto the frame and we are going to be plugging them into the AIO. Next, we will be installing the Express LS receiver. You're going to require four connections. You're going to have need 5 volts, ground, RX, and TX. Just remember for all kinds of like additional chips that you're actually connecting to the flight controller, you always kind of want to reverse the RX and TX. So same for the Express LS. You're going to reverse the RX and TX line between the flight control and the receiver. So which means RX goes to TX and TX goes to RX. So the communication happens like this. So once solder, twist the wires neatly and just tuck the receiver into a hidden spot into the frame. So so I just tug it into the bottom right here. Next, let's connect the analog VTX. It also requires four connections. You're going to need 5 volts, ground, video, and signal. 
On the AIO, connect the 5V to 5V, ground to ground, and video to VO, which is indicated as video out, and signal to TX. So the signal to TX is actually going to be the tram cable, which will allow you to control your um, VTX via the flight controller, which means via beta flight. Next, we will be installing the camera. Since it comes with the plug, you will need to connect it to the 5V, ground, and video in, so three connections. So once wired, Mount the camera onto the canopy using the provided screws and it's just going to be a simple fit. Now let's secure the VTX. You will have to flip it facing upwards and add buffer pads underneath to lift this lightly because you want to prevent the antenna from touching the board and potentially causing a short, which is the last thing you want in any build. Next, after the VTX is connected, we will be mounting the canopy. Use a long screw that is included in the kit. For the rear, there may be a small gap due to added height from the VTX. Just insert a gummy into the gap and secure it with another screw. So this is going to be very cheeky, but at least it's going to work. Once that is done, we are nearly finished. The last step is to add on the props. Follow the video guide just to install them correctly, especially since you are planning to run the props in. Now the build is complete. The next step is to configure everything in beta flight. Bind the receiver to your goggles and connects to your analog goggles. Once you're done with this, we're basically ready to fly. And to save you time, I will not be going through the beta flight setup step by step. Instead, I'm just going to share my preset in the description. If you're going to do the exact same build, you can just download the file and load it in the preset tab. And most of the settings is going to be done. All we need to do is probably just to check the most tab to confirm if your radio switches are set up correctly. And the default VTX channel will be R1 and it's going to be at 25 milliwatts. Let's pause the setup for a quick moment. I'm just going to be telling you how to enter the giveaway. First, please help me make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and leave a comment down below. Then please help me out by filling the Google Sheet form so I know you are officially entered. The duration of the giveaway will be listed in the description section and the winner will be randomly selected and announced only through a post on my YouTube channel. So if you receive an email say you win whatsoever, it's just not going to be real. And so for other rules and the other details, please refer to the Google Sheet form. Alright, let's go back to the main video. So let's start with some indoor flights as I do think indoors is always a good starting point for these tiny whoops as this is kind of like the purpose for them. So after taking off, I finally started to understand maps reasons of the part selections. So just to give you an idea of the flying characteristic and what I feel about it, it's kind of feels like a large long range cruiser FPV drone. You know, those kind of seven inch that kind of like ones that you can fly over the mountains. It kind of just feels like that, but it just kind of builds in a lot smaller form factor. So the disadvantage of less thrust and slower top speed contributed by the relatively lower KV was perfectly compensated by the longer by bay props and kind of like the bleaker form factor. So the quad actually flies no problem at all. Because of the lower top speed and the longer by blade props, adding overall weights and drags, it will take the motor longer to spin up to generate power and thrust, so it's going to make the quad much easier to control without harsh requirements of active nimble throttle input values, which is making it much more easier to fly. However, the downside, as we mentioned, everything is just going to be a double-sided blade, it's lower KV, larger props, thus directly contribute to decreased top speed and acro ability. When you're punch up your throttle trying to get some sudden punch up powers, there is just going to be a quite a significant delay and it's just going to be a take longer for the motor to spin up into that kind of speed. So yep, so if your goal is trying to use this for freestyle, this is probably not going to be the one for it. Next, moving to outdoor, we are going to be doing some outdoor flights at the front yard. So this is just to show you that it is doable since we are now having more space and we can kind of also push the speed a little bit more. But as you can see, because of the specs, it is just not going to be very fast and actually quite slow. But I will say this is more than enough if you are a complete beginner. Because of this nature of the controls, you have to note that this quad is not going to handle corners like really well. As you can see, like in the footage right here, it's just going to be taking a lot of time for it to like just you know, maneuver around. But just looking at it at another way and to max out the strength of this build, it's going to be a wonderful cruiser for exploration. The slower speed and steadier over control is easier for you to fly through tight gaps, 
like between tree branches, underneath the bench, or even just any gaps that you can find in general. Because yeah, you're flying at a slow speed and the throttle is not too jitter, easier to kind of for you to kind of aim for these gaps. As for the flight time wise, my batteries are just not the freshest packs that I can find and they are kind of like aging a little bit. So I cannot fairly tell you like the most accurate flight time at the moment because I don't have any fresh packs on my bench. But I can say with these Lava 550 packs, I was able to comfortably get about 6 to 7 minutes on average when cruising with these just a full charge, which is actually already quite good of the flight time because yeah, 6-7 minutes for a PV drone, it's eternity already. Lastly, let's talk about the most important question. Is this kit actually going to be worth it? Well, I would say if you are brand new and just starting at PV, I would suggest probably skip this kit completely and just get a Biden flight. Getting a Biden flight, you can just start having fun right away. You don't have to build this and the overall cost, I would say it's just going to be much lower. And you know, that's just the hard truth fact. But if you are the DIY type of person and really wanted to build it yourself, then this kit might actually be worth it for a shot. Yes, only if MAPS is able to kind of fix the problem and optimize the part selection and just make it much more easier for the beginners to build. Otherwise, I think that this is a half complete kit and you have to have a lot of turnarounds and it's probably not going to be worth it for your time. As usual, if this is no problem, Parts links are just going to be down below, so you can go, so go check them out. All right, so that is basically just going to be about it for this short build video. And if you are actually interested, yes, don't forget to actually participate in the giveaway. And yep, I hope you are actually going to be the winner for this. I will see you in the next one. Happy flying. Alright, so I know that the video has ended, but since you're actually still here, let me actually give you some additional tips and tricks so you can save the most money if you are going to be buying MAPS products. So currently, MAPS is having a new program called the MAPS Vine Voice. Essentially, this is just going to be a monthly subscription program that requires you to pay $3 in order for you to become a member. And as a member, you are going to be getting additional discounts and additional coupons that you can just kind of stack on each other to kind of get the best price. So if you're actually going to be purchasing something you know probably sign up for this it's probably going to save you the most money and it doesn't auto renew so you know just pay it once and use it and done and also the best part of this is that they are actually going to be giving you raffle tickets so you will be able to participate in the gear giveaway so sometimes it's motor sometimes it's flight controller and who knows probably there's going to be something more expensive coming up later so you know the three dollars for three raffle tickets for month it's actually not bad Additionally, just to make this a little bit more fun and to thank you for staying so long in this video to support me, I will be giving away three one month membership of the MAPS Vine program. So if you also wanted to participate in this, make sure to drop a comment down below and in your comments, make sure you put the word Vine in there. So, you know, I will be randomly select three lucky winners to win this. And also I will be announcing it on my YouTube channel as well. Yep. All right. I hope you actually win and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.